Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar, Embedding AI Powered Analytics into Your Application. My name is Daniel Shaw Dennis and I'm really excited today to talk to you about some really fantastic technology that is changing the analytics industry and what it could mean if you're looking to embed this technology as part of your application. Now, just a bit of housekeeping, there is a little question panel you'll see there in the Bright Talk window. So please, um, if you hear anything that you want to um, ask a few questions on during the course of the webinar, please pop it in there and I will get to them uh, at the end of, of today's session. Now, why am I here? Um, for me, in, at Yellowstone, we work with a number of embedded partners and it's, it's just my favourite part of, of uh, the organisation because you know, seeing some really great technology partners embed analytics and grow um, is just really rewarding to see that. And you know, I've been lucky enough to work with hundreds of our embedded partners and help them take their embedded products to market from you know, global technology providers to local companies as well. And we've had this technology in our products for some time and I think I've been lucky enough to represent Yellowfin at AI Summit and just speaking about this new wave of technology. And I've also been involved in building the frameworks that help our partners take our products to market as well as the kind of frameworks around some of our kind of AI powered technology, um, which is called Signals there. So from a Yellowfin perspective, you know, we are a leading analytics vendor and provide, um, in my opinion, the only enterprise analytics suite that combines industry-leading automated analysis, what I'll be talking about today, you know, storytelling and collaboration. And we are ranked number one for embedded analytics. Um, and as I mentioned, we've been in this kind of space for some time, and this is just a slide from a recent Gartner presentation. And they call this new wave the augmented analytics wave, which we've been kind of leaders of uh, for some time. So really, you know, for the next 35 minutes, you know, plus some questions, what I'm going to be covering today is firstly just talking about the advantages of this technology and what does kind of AI mean in the analytic sense. I'm going to go through just a bit of a checklist that, you know, regardless of the technology, there are certain things you've got to really consider before you embed any analytics kind of products. I'm going to talk about the technology. I'm going to look at it from the, okay, what's the potential current state and where is it going or where is it up to now, um, kind of a before and after with this kind of new tech. And just a really kind of short look at how we embed or enable this in Yellow Thing, just to give you a bit of context and then talk about a recent partner story that are just about to go to market with this technology. Then outside that, I wanted to talk about you know, the marketing side of things, getting market ready for this, and then things like you know, considerations of pricing, sales readiness, and just close with kind of one last thing uh, to remember. So when thinking about, I guess, this technology, it's not a case for me about just adding a bot to your software so you can use the term AI in your marketing. I mean, yes, it's a hot topic, and for those who follow it, it can be quite overwhelming about this kind of you know, brave new world that we're stepping into. But when you go on, I guess, beyond that waffle and, and look at the, some of the specifics, there is real opportunity that this technology could help you solve a problem for you or your customers and provide something better. And what it could mean for software applications is that competitive edge, which hopefully comes with some you know, increased market share. There's a potential for increased revenue, either a brand new revenue stream or to hugely increase the value of your existing um, application. And then, you know, ways to actually legitimately market what you have. And once again, I'll talk to that uh, a little bit later on. So I've been working with partners for some time and probably maybe you know, 10 years ago or so, I think that build versus buy argument which pops up was somewhat valid. But these days, with such advanced technology at your disposal, um, as a software company, you know, and once again, I'm biased about this, uh, you know, you should be looking to embed the components that you need. Um, I mean, we have some really great partners who understand the banking industry, understand you know, workplace health and safety, and the processes and workflows around that. But they're not necessarily experts in the analytics, you know, let alone the nuances of analytic software that have been developed over thousands of customers and many years. And with this kind of AI-driven tech of today, you know, I think firms should really be leveraging you know, their domain experience and marrying it up and embedding what they don't have. So I think you know, these days, kind of build versus buy in the equation. So when we talk about 
AI powered analytics, you know, what are we actually saying? So I'm going to borrow a little bit from Gartner. As I mentioned, you call this kind of new wave augmented analytics. And it's an approach that automates insights you know, using algorithms, machine learning, natural language generation. But what it fundamentally means for me is a couple of things, and, and automation is the key thing here. You know, those manual tasks and those analysts on the call, you know, all the data discovery, root cause analysis, manually crunching and building um, calculations, the machines are essentially automating this for us. So reducing the number of steps to get to that bit of analytical insight with the obvious kind of time, efficiency, and cost benefits that come with that. But what it also means, uh, it's we're teaching it to kind of analyze as we do. So if you think about it, we generally kind of sift through data, try to find a pattern. But today we know there is so much more data coming in. And the difference is that the machine can do this at scale. So not only faster, but also the potential to uncover things that we just couldn't. So if I'm looking at a report like this, and I'm looking at you know, say marketing leads over time, I can probably easily spot um, you know, something interesting here and go on uh, and investigate it. But you know, if I'm an e-commerce site with you know, thousands and thousands of transactions per hour, um, I might not be able to see something like that. And unless I have you know, teams of people, I'm not going to find that little nugget of gold um, for me or my customers. And with the computing power we have today, we can really leverage these technologies to do this for us at scale. And I think very soon this is going to be the norm. And with analytics, we're starting to see this become the norm, you know, really allowing the technology to do the heavy lifting, you know, process the data, and automate things that we previously did um, manually. And I think um, a great example of this is something kind of we use every day, or just have had every day in Google Maps. And, those kind of probably born before 1990 can remember the old street directories that you'd have in your car and you'd look up your new address and of course it'd be across you know, two pages because that's just the way of things and you'd you know, find those pages, you'd plan your route and then you'd start driving. You'd hit a stag and you'd probably you know, reroute, have a look at the pages again and start driving again and then eventually get to your destination. Whereas Google Maps, you just pop it in and drive because it'll tell you exactly kind of where you want to go. And the, all these steps, that you know, took to get to that destination is basically gone. And this is the same thing that's happening with kind of analytical tasks uh, as well. But you know, before we start to get into the technology, um, you know, I think there's a fundamental thing that you should consider before you know, embedding any technology partner. And here's just my kind of short checklist um, of the things you've got to kind of think about uh, beforehand. And firstly, it looks at, I guess, the breadth of functionality in the analytics technology. So you want to make sure that you've got the ability to integrate the data that you have. So this might be you know, your specific databases or, or data sources, either directly or the use of APIs. You've got to make sure you've got pretty robust application integration. So this, once again, might be different methods to integrate the two applications, or the ability to essentially take components out of one, in this case, your analytics technology, and just really embed what you need and what you need to deliver to your customers. And thirdly, I guess the really important consideration is security. And typically, if you've got a software application, you, you would have created a security layer. You might be leveraging existing kind of frameworks like Active Directory, or you might have something custom, and you want to be able to essentially bring that in without having to recreate that or, or worst case, kind of manage kind of two systems from that perspective. Also considerations, uh, I said, you know, when you're taking analytics products to market, you know, for me it's not about for us, here's some software and knock yourself out. But you know, you're, you're taking a new product, you want it to last, and you want it to you know, gain revenue, etc. And I think there's important considerations outside that, that around the business model. So being able to have a, a model that, that works, it's not a barrier uh, to your customers. So they're not look like they're essentially buying two products, but it's just one product with essentially another module. Um, ensuring that you have you know, a partner that has good services around that. As I mentioned, um, we've got some great partners, but they're not analytics experts. So we've seen they can leverage um, us or our, our partner networks that are experts in analytics and just creating the best analytics and leveraging the product as much as possible. I think brand clarity is important from a, a white labeling perspective. So once again, it's easy for your customers to, to you know, consume the products that you're creating. And also, I guess, technology for the future. So for example, we've got a lot of partners that have gone from an on-premise solution to a kind of subscription-based kind of SaaS-based solution. So being able to have things like 
multi-tenancy and, and built for the future in terms of where uh, the technology is going, I think is uh, essential uh, as well. So let's look at some of the, I guess, the specific ways um, that, you know, we provide this kind of new technology. And as I mentioned, I'm going to look at it from what you might be providing today if you've got an analytics application or looking to um, bring an analytics application to market and how it can be enhanced with this tech. So if you've already got an analytics application, you've probably got, you know, consumers. So people that you provide a set of reports or dashboards to and give them the ability to, you know, filter, slice and dice the content that you provide. Now the next leap from this could be the ability to give your users, you know, a way to click on a spike um, and actually have the technology tell it why it occurred. Or click on a point in time and compare it to another point in time and run that query in run <clears throat> real time on the spot. And this technology can potentially then automatically create those visualizations to help explain, you know, why that happened or um, give you a natural language explanation to tell the user, well, this is why this is occurring, this is statistically what's happening here. So with something like this for the report consumer, how has their life changed now? So they certainly have you know, more enriched analysis and it's essentially giving your customers a new method to get answers. If you're providing a a richer experience, and once again, you're kind of leveraging the technology here, you're allowing it to do those calculations, present that information, crunch that data in runtime um, with that computing power, and hopefully, um, you know, giving your customers a better way to ask a question with a kind of point and click, and with the output, you know, better understanding of what they're seeing. So essentially, you know, more answers faster. So if you look at the next step, you're potentially providing um, you know, self-service reporting. So this is the ability for your customers to create their own reports, their own visualizations, and do their own data discovery. And typically they might have a drag and drop interface to do this, you know, allowing them to easily build a query from scratch, form their analysis, and build their own data view. With the technology today, you can really leverage, you know, the machine to automate this for you and have interfaces that allow you to kind of type in your query, like show me sales for Q4. Or have it menu-based and then select what you want to analyze, and it will perform that analysis for you. Um, it would then create the visualizations, create the co complex calculations, the variance analysis, all those things that kind of take time to build, essentially kind of do it for you with explanations as to you know, what's occurring there. So what this could provide you is, at best is doing the work for them and, and surfacing insights they might not be able to see. And at the very least, it's giving them a really big head start, you know, building an initial theory, creating calculations, visualizations, they can just go on and change and amend as they see fit. So how would their, you know, life be different after that? So firstly, it's certainly creating analytics um, and doing analysis at a much faster rate. Once again, you're providing a more rich analysis uh, interface and process you're doing, or the machine is doing, all the grunt work there for a self-service user, providing a much better customer experience that's leveraging the technology. So you've got a very obvious kind of time and cost saving and efficiency gain that comes with that. But there's the potential to provide answers that the customers wouldn't have been able to find before. And I think the next step beyond that is the, I guess, the more truer automation of analysis. And the closest thing you might have these days is you know, scheduled reports based on manual thresholds. So you might say, look, when stock hits a certain level, I want to send the stock controller an alert or a report to say you've got to top up based on this amount. But the next step from this is essentially letting the machine to um, do that work for you. So essentially surface whatever statistically is important or whatever statistical change has occurred to alert you to that. So the good thing about that, it's not a manual process. It's running all the time. There's no kind of set um, by a user. And the beauty of some of this technology as well is it gets smarter and more relevant over time. So think of the way that you use Netflix, the more you engage with certain content, it kind of knows what you like and, and serves that up um, more and more. Similar with this technology, the more you engage with certain reports, certain metrics, it'll understand that these are things you actually kind of care about and will be surfacing more of those over time. And it also has the ability to scan other data sources. So typically you'd have reports which is based on a data source, but if there's other information or, or data that might relate to that, so it has the ability to scan other sources, 
find similar correlations and patterns and surface those as well to provide a much richer experience to help the user understand you know, why something might have occurred. So how is life different after that? Well, it's dramatically reducing those steps to find insight. You know, you're not only leveraging all the data that you have by allowing the machine to crunch through it, but you're also potentially leveraging other sources that might have had an impact on what you know, the customer or person was looking for, as well as delivering insights that they never would have had otherwise. I guess the level of analysis then is just is greatly um, increased over there, and with that comes a much better, stronger customer experience for something what we want to provide our customers. So a lot of you know really good positives to provide um, for a customer looking at these technologies um, to embed in their application. So I'm going to briefly touch on just how we at Yellow can provide this in our suite of products. It's not going to get too salesy, but just to give you a bit of context of how we do it, and then talk about kind of a recent kind of customer or ISV partner story in this case. So the first way we do this is through um, something called assisted insights. So this is for typically the consumer that is consuming dashboards. So we've gone with kind of a point, a click to answer type functionality that you might see a spike, you might see a data point, you click on that and you can go, well, explain why that occurred, or I want to compare that to another point in time. And what it will then do is we'll run a series of algorithms depending on the question that you ask and essentially surface the most relevant information to that question in the form of you know, uh, visualization and a naturally machine-generated um, language to help explain what actually occurred there. The second way we do that is for that uh, kind of data discovery. So we've gone with a menu-based approach where you can essentially select what you want to analyze, um, present a field of analysis that you want to look at, and then it'll run that query and do that analysis for you. It'll generate all those visualizations to actually build them all for you from scratch, build all the, all the um, calculations, and do all that kind of legwork, um, and allow that kind of data discovery person to then go, go forth and, and use it uh, as they kind of see fit. Um, a third way when we look at that, and this is, I guess, what was once called advanced analytics, but it's typically called more kind of, kind of data science these days but allow you to essentially tap into um, a lot of the very popular kind of data science um, tools uh, as part of the kind of ETL process or data preparation process in Yellowfin. So I know we've often seen, I guess, this technology kind of siloed as opposed to the, I guess, the core analytics, but now really the ability to bring it in, leverage the machine underneath it, and get some really great results and, uh, yeah, against a lot of the models that, that's there. So there's different ways you can leverage this technology if you're using that as part of your analytic application. And lastly, um, I guess a very specific product that we brought to market last year for automated analytics called Yellowfin Signals, which what it does is essentially automates that discovery process and, and trawls through your business data to find statistically significant changes. It has a notification process as well, which will tell you about you know, trend changes, spikes, you know, dips, etc. Um, as well as providing natural language uh, explanation and correlated analysis for you know, lots of different data sources depending on what's impacted that particular uh, signal of data. So a few different ways that we provide that from an analytics suite perspective. So I want to talk about um, one of our ISVs that I've kind of recently worked with, which is a really interesting case. So Prometheus um, has been one of our kind of embedded partners for many years, and their customers I include just over half of Australia's major health funds. And they developed operation reporting and forward detection solutions specific to the health fund industry. And they embed Yellowfin to assist users um, with personalized analytical content, which is accessible from desktop, mobile, etc. Now, we're currently working with Prometheus to use signals to find claim patterns that fall outside the norm and allow these health funds to essentially investigate immediately and take appropriate action. So, you know, getting a signal down to a specific kind of claim outlier as opposed to kind of trawling through thousands of these kind of manually and you know, having them potentially be hidden under an aggregated viewer data. So a really interesting use case, once again, about kind of reducing the steps and, and automating what is a, currently a manual process for a lot of these health funds. Now, so there are multiple ways to look at this technology, and I know from an embedded standpoint, you think from a customer point of view, but it's interesting to look at it from potentially internally as well, because you might be providing um, services or analytical services for your customers. 
So there's the potential to, to provide much greater efficiency in your own internal processes. So if you're potentially using this from a data discovery point of view, you know, cutting a big percentage of your, that grunt time um, over a large um, number of uh, people can be a considerable advantage to what you're doing. And then be able to reutilize those costs in high value work like the actual analysis itself um, is something that I know some of our partners are looking at. And then you've got some very obvious things about being able to productize this technology. You've got the potential for you know, new services that come out of that. You know, a couple of our partners are looking at a managed service for signals where they're essentially curating what comes out of the engine and you know, providing that to their um, big clients in a curated fashion because they know their businesses. Because there's a lot of different ways from a, not just from a purely here from software, but um, I guess the other things that fall around that ecosystem. As well as the obvious one providing a much better level of what you're providing um, today. Now going, I guess, beyond the technology, and when we're going looking from a sales and marketing perspective, it's important that you're talking about you know, the value of this as opposed to the pure tech. And you know, once again, it's not about putting an AI sticker on everything right now, and especially marketers, and I've put my hand up as well. We're guilty of this as well, and we overdo the buzzwords. We want all the SEO juice that comes with that. But ultimately, when it gets beyond that, it's the value that this technology brings that should be marketed, that should be in those, those pitches. So if you're thinking about it, once again, you know, how is your customer's life different before and after? I'm not going to read you that, kind of go on through that, but all those different things, and it might be you know, different things for different people out there depending on the type of business, but it's important that you articulate what that means to your customers kind of through the technology. And a really important thing is just thinking about the audience's capability. You might, you might get excited and go, well, I want to do all X, Y, and Z, but um, there's no use giving your customers a better, faster way to build reporting content. They're not savvy enough to actually build reports themselves to begin with. You now, if they're C levels that only consume information, then you want to uh, you know, enhance that you know, consumer experience um, where you can. Because often the you know, audience or well, your customers don't really care the technology that's under the hood. You know, if it gives them something more, if it gives them something better, that's what they're buying into. So you might be using a you know, k-means clustering powered by machine learning algorithms that give your users better segmentation to their customer base. But they don't really care which algorithm you use. They care about they now have more accurate segmentation. They have better tools for their campaigns, and they can achieve a better ROI. And that's the value of what it can actually bring to them. So kind of putting the spotlight on us and how have we done this from a Yellowfin perspective. So I'll give you an example of, I guess, how we kind of talk about um, signals. And feel free to critique it in the, in the question. I'm, I'm very open to that. If, if that's it. I love getting some feedback. But just to give you a, an example of how we kind of look at it. And here's a kind of page that kind of talks about the, the product Yellowfin signals. And good old AI is front and center. But we talk about what it's trying to do. It's trying to shortcut that kind of data to insight and trying to you know, talk about what does it actually kind of bring to the customers. And if I stroll down here, you know, the before and after step, you've got multiple I guess, steps to traditionally find analytics or find a bit of insight, which is you know, dramatically shortcutted with you know, the technology that we have here. You know, try to provide an example of a you know, data source that people are less familiar with as well as you know, having custom stories, but also um, given it is new technology, trying to give, I guess, our readers an, an understanding of this new tech and, and what it's all mean. And that's important if you're trying to especially educate a new customer base um, as to what might be um, available there. So I'll flip back to my screen there. And that's, I think, that's a really important thing. You know, it's not about the features. It's not about you know, the shiny things. It's about the value. And I harp on that only because you know, I've seen many, many times our partners that just kind of copy and paste our collateral um, without really applying it to the application. You know, if you're embedding an analytics application into your software, remember you're not selling a BI tool. You're selling analytics powering your app. So you should be showing the value of that application to your audience, and that's a really, really kind of critical thing. Um, and I'll, sh I'll just share an example of one of our partners that have done a really, really good job of this, and that partner is uh, Kodak. And Kodak, um, their business is entirely kind of uh, B2B these days, as you can um, kind of imagine from historically, 
But what they do uh, with uh, Yellowfin is they uh, essentially have a solution called the Print Energy Cloud, which allows their kind of major business printing customers to essentially better understand and optimize their printing workflows. I just jumped on their website of what they call decision uh, analytics. And if I scroll down here, how they use Yellowfin to highlight the value, they talk very specifically about things that their customers need. So if I go look at this, I've got Insight Job Activity, which they talk about, very specific. If I scroll down, they talk about you know, pages and artwork dashboards about you know, seasonal trends and analyzing this page information. And they talk about things like the JTP Activity Dashboard. Now, I have no idea what a JTP Activity Dashboard, but I'm pretty sure if you're in the printing workflow business, you know what this is, and, and you're surfacing the value of, of very specific information for the application through analytics. So this is the kind of way you can really highlight that and use, I guess, analytics to showcase what you have. It's not just about um, here's a VI tool, uh, essentially. So if I flip back to my presentation, and hopefully we're back now. So kind of moving on from this, um, I guess some considerations from a, a pricing point of view. And there are multiple things to potentially consider um, for pricing this application, particularly when it comes to new technology. So I wanted to share a few examples of how our partners do it. Now the first thing is you've got to remember you want to make it easy. If it's a barrier, if it's, if it's tricky, if it's complicated, it's just going to be harder for your customers to get around. So the first thing to think about as well is um, what's going to be the biggest value add because you also don't want to leave potential revenue on the table with the value of something to look at. So there are different ways to look at it. Starting with, you know, quite simply modular pricing. So you might charge an additional amount for, you know, your analytics or your kind of AI-powered analytics in your application. You, look, you could look to kind of bundle that in, increase the price of your, you know, core app um, with um, analytics components uh, included as part of that. Strategically, you might go down a free path. So it might be a case of absorbing the cost so you can get more value out of your, your core application. Um, I guess the, the tricky thing with that is, you know, are you potentially leaving some revenue that you might be able to gain out of um, having something kind of modularized and separated out? You can look at a functional split. So, um, you know, fees for components. I know some of our partners have a function split for consumers versus creators. You might look at that with some of this, you know, very advanced technology which you can essentially turn on and off um, at a premium. It might be a data split, so you might find that some, you know, a heavy transactional e-commerce site might be great for this automated analysis, but once again, you could charge at a premium for that particular data source that the analysis is being performed on and automatically generated. Or it might be a content split. There might be certain dashboards, reports, or, or automated content that you want to deliver um, based on a, on a set fee. So there are different ways to think about um, what would make sense for your business and the technology that you want to uh, provide. I think the key thing is, you know, with this, uh, you know, especially with new technology, and this is why I talked about, I guess, having a partner that will kind of grow and pivot with you, is that, you know, you're able to kind of test out the waters a bit. So I think it's important, particularly with new things, is monitor the usage, and get that customer feedback so you're kind of feeding that into your process. So if you're taking an analytics application to market for the first time um, or some of this new technology, assume there's going to be a betting in period of at least kind of three plus months to get a feel for um, you know, the customer uptake, what they're using, um, look at the competitor landscape at the same time to understand what's happening out there. So you can then kind of pivot and change to make the most sense. And Kodak's a good example is they went down a kind of traditional user-based model, um, wasn't quite working as well, and they pivoted to a freemium type model, and it just went very, very well and was very, very successful for them. But we were able to have, you know, pivot with them, um, which was obviously um, advantageous for all of us because we wanted it to do well um, for both aspects. And the other thing just to think about um, is sales readiness. Now, your sales team might be experts and know how to sell a, a CRM application, but analytics is a different beast. So don't just assume, because they know how to sell one bit of software, um, they know how to sell another piece. So make sure that um, that understanding, that training, um, you know, bringing in the right people that understand analytics, if, if that's what you need, that will help them uh, essentially sell that as part of the, you know, the core application or potentially some services around that. So um, don't just count that need to get readiness as you get your technical team ready all the way across your business, and that also extends to your marketing team as I kind of spoke about earlier. 
And one last thing, and it's that age-old one that you know, data is still the foundation. You know, governed data is still required regardless of the technology you're going to put in because you know, we buy, it's all very cumbersome to do, it's not very exciting, at least not for most of us, but you know, it's garbage in, garbage out, but this time using this technology is it's kind of garbage out at scale. You know, when we first started using this with Prometheus in the kind of testing phases, you know, signals actually found a few data gaps because it kind of highlighted that pretty quickly. And if we're going to rely on algorithms to assist our decision making, we've got to give them the best chance to be used effectively with you know, good, clean, uh, governed data. And really kind of last thing, probably to the, the squishiness there, just talking about, I guess, the embedded partnership with Yellowfin. And you know, as I said, we've been doing this for some time since day one. And from a product perspective, uh, it's really been built for that um, embeddability, essentially, and, and wide labeling. And we've been working with kind of hundreds of partners from you know, your big organizations like DNC and, and Kodak, like I mentioned, to a lot of you know, local organizations and some really you know, cool technology. And because of which, you know, we are you know, certainly considered you know, leaders in the space and ranked number one in, in like Bark and others. And for, for me especially, I think it's not just about you know, selling software, it's just understanding that you know, taking embedded analytics to market is a big process and there's a lot of different steps involved to actually make that successful. And you know, we've, we've built a lot of the frameworks and you know, made mistakes along the way to do that. And we have a really complete kind of ISD quick start program that starts with you know, understanding the foundation of what you want to do, helping with integration, with creating content from kind of go to market support and planning, branding to marketing, all the way through to kind of post go live and, and onwards because we want to see these applications grow. We've also built frameworks for tools like Signal to understand you know, what kind of data and the structure that's required to you know, leverage these kind of automated analytics products um, and delivers, I guess, the, the most relevant and, and I guess, uh, most valuable insights um, to our customers. So really, um, I think that concludes our webinar. I think I'm just about on 35 minutes or just under, so I, I kept my, my timing. Um, look, from a Yellowfin perspective, is there anything that you'd like to explore there that you've seen, do jump on our website. Um, there's a couple of ways to get into that. You can um, jump on, there's a big kind of yellow demo button here. Um, as I said, we've been doing this for the embedded market for some time and all the team are pretty much experts in the space. So you can have a demo with one of our teams who will kind of go through the specifics around that, embeddability, integration, um, or the commercial side as well. Um, if you've got your own data and just want to give it a go, um, there are free trials and downloads on, on the website as well. Or if you've got your platform on AWS or Azure or Google, um, there's a free trial there. You can just literally spin it up and go and, and see if there might be a, you know, a good fit to your uh, application. So with that, um, thank you everybody for uh, I guess the, your time today. And I will throw to the questions in the questions panel that I see coming in. So if you did have any questions in there, please um, pop them in and I will endeavor to go through them. First question, um, can I view this later? <laughs> yeah, no problem, so I'm gonna have to leave early. Certainly can, uh, it'll be available on demand. Um, there's also a few uh, attachments in the attachments and links section. So. Um, a bit more information if you'd like to do some reading around some of this technology and some of the specifics around uh, the analytics suite. Do you have any documentation on your integration options? Uh, yes, we do. There's a couple of places you can get that. Uh, first is on the Yellowfin Wiki, so just type in Yellowfin Wiki in Google, and we have a pretty kind of detailed encyclopedia of um, uh, not just integration options, but all uh, information technical around Yellowfin. We've also got a community website, so just Yellowfin Community, and that, that's essentially our forum that our global support team jump in and ask, uh, answer your questions, um, which you're free to kind of post up there uh, as well. Uh, next question, uh, how can some of the functionality you talk about be controlled? Okay, um, so I mean, I'll talk about this from a Yellowfin perspective. Uh, we control things in, in multiple ways in Yellowfin, so um, from some of the specific functionality uh, there are kind of functional level uh, kind of settings. So from this Sid Insights piece that I, sh I kind of talked about, from literally nearly everything in Yellowfin, from being able to export to PDF versus Excel, you can essentially turn off and on nearly every component. So you can set up groups of audience. So if you're going to do a functional split from a commercial perspective, you can essentially set it up and assign those groups to set of functions that 
you know, give them the access that you want to give them. Further to that, you also have um, controlling the content that you could set out. So you can control certain kind of reports, dashboards, etc., for certain groups, as well as row level security. So what that means is, if I log in and I can I can only see a certain country, and you log in and you can only see another country, um, filter or that restriction will be on every single query that you do. So typically, Yelpin runs a um, query at runtime and will allow that essentially that where clause or you know, that restriction whenever it runs the data against um, that person. And you get that as soon as you log on to uh, the, the platform. Uh, next one, uh, what's the best way to introduce this technology to customers? Um, yeah, good question. I'd always suggest doing it kind of, I guess, easily and, and, and with as much corresponding information and help as possible. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard enough just to introduce analytics to alone some of the advanced features that we talked about. But I think the advantage it can bring um, it has to be explored as to what, what it can do for your customers. So I think the approach, um, depending on the user group, so from a consumer level, it might be a case of you know, click to answer. It might actually be an easy functionality to pick up because it's a natural, uh, a natural thing to be able to do. Click on something and get get an answer back. But accompanying that with you know, light training and some videos to help them across that process to understand more understand the output that comes out with a lot of this technology, I think would be beneficial. Versus um, some of the I guess the self service stuff, which might be a little bit more advanced in terms of the training sessions um, to see what gets generated. And then from the I guess the more automated side of things, um, working with your customers um, to making sure that I guess what what is generated automatically is relevant to that user base. And that's an important step when looking at some of these automated tools is the relevancy because it serves up something that isn't as important or relevant, it'll get ignored. So in those early phases to make sure you're tuning the engine, um, whatever I'm using, so it's producing the most relevant results so your customers see uh, value straight away. All right, so I think that just about concludes the questions that we have. Um, but if you have any more questions that pop up, um, please feel free to contact me or, or jump on the website and, and talk to the team. Um, so once again, thank you very much for um, attending today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us directly. And wherever you are, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>